All right. Hey guys, what's up? It's Kyle here. Part two, my Q and A, uh, K-pop, um, video. Uh, so starting off, we're gonna go with the uh, Pedris, Pedris, Pedris fan, 2012. Sorry for mispronounce that. Your questions you have for me is: Do I think M Countdown, Show Champion, Music Bank, and Ingayo are base are biased in the winners? Um, one thing I I would say Music Bank and per se, I don't think Music Bank is biased. I think Music Bank has always been fair um, down through the years with you know their winners. Now um, Show Champion, I don't I don't really watch them too much. Um, they're a new show. I think they just started up like last year or maybe the year before. I want to say they just started Show Champion last year. Um, so with them, I don't really know much about it. I mean, I've seen like a few performances, and I mean, I've seen Show Champion like three times, like from top to bottom, entire show. But uh, not enough to get like a full opinion on them and how they run their systems. Um, Inkayo, um, Inkayo, I think is 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 a bit. And I'm sorry if I may mispronounce that, but Inkayo, I think is I think they're biased. I think with a lot of their uh, winners, uh, I could be wrong about this, but I think I've heard that SM Entertainment um, owns Inkayo. I could be wrong about that, but I think I think that's what I think that's what's being said that SM Entertainment owns um, Inkayo, which I could probably believe because most of their artists um, wins the most on there, if not also on Music Bank. So, um, I could see that, I think, Inkayo is a bit biased towards uh, SM artists in particular. Um, I know YG Entertainment owns, I think YG Entertainment owns M Countdown. M Countdown or Music Core, I think it's Music Core, that YG Entertainment um, owns. There hasn't been any disruptive about that except for the one time when Seven um, beat Gina in the, beat Gina. Uh, back in 2010, there's some discrepancy there. They thought because of favoritism, because um, YG did does own Music Core, but besides that, I think there some of them at least. Music Bank, I know for a fact. For me, I think Music Bank is the most fair out of all the shows. Uh, do you think weekly awards and K-pop really matter anymore? Uh, yeah, I think they do matter because they've shown it shows you the popularity. Um, of, of the artist, and you know, it actually accolades, which makes their fan base increase, which makes them, you know, it it clarifies, or not only clarifies, but it um, shows that these stars are popular. You know, um, even though the the awards that they win on the on the weekly music shows are kind of like insignificant compared to like some of the big huge awards. You know, like throughout that Korea has like throughout the year for the music entertainment business. They're kind of insignificant compared to those, but I still think the the awards for music shows they still do have some credibility because it um, it it shows you that that artist is popular, you know, that they're what's hot right now. Their song is popular. Um, do I think Music Countdown? And then your last question for me. Do I think Music Countdown Show Champion Music Bank and Ingrayo Show should change up the scoring system? Uh. I don't know. I think the score system they have right now is pre pretty decent. Um, they, you know, they vote off of downloads. Downloads. I know me music downloads like ringtones, uh, physical album sales. I don't know what else they vote for. I know one of the music shows I think vote off of like four categories, not three like most of them. So I don't know what the other fourth one is. But um, besides that, I don't. I don't know how. W how would they um, vote? Off a, you know, what other way could you like really have the the, the scoring system? You know, I, I don't think uh, I think the way they have it now is probably the only way you could could do it. I don't see any other way. So because of that, I wouldn't change the scoring system. Next set of questions comes from Superfini zero zero. You say, oh, "Hi Upa, you're awesome." Uh, your question you have for me is, "Who is your favorite K-pop YouTubers?" The only K-pop YouTuber, honestly, that that I stayed in contact with for quite a while and I would say he's my favorite is the Mr. K pop fan. Um I intentionally even when I when I ran up against uh when I ran up when I crossed him, it was only due to because he was uh making wrestling videos and I clicked on his chance said, Oh, he's in the K pop I'm like, Oh, guess what? I like wrestling and K pop too. 
And so uh, that's how I got connected with Mr. K-pop fan. But since then, I really haven't, like, intentionally looked out or searched for any other uh, K-pop YouTubers. And it was because of him that, you know, a lot of guys, a lot of his subscribers, um, you know, he steered you guys towards my direction. And you got, you know, that's how I started making K-pop videos myself um, with the wrestling. But, uh, yeah, so Mr. K-pop fan is, the, is my favorite and only uh, K-pop YouTuber um, out right now that I know of. Uh, I have heard one guy who's like really popular. His name is uh, K-pop is on my mind. I've seen some of his videos. I'm not subscribed to him or anything, but he's like really popular. He's like a lot of subs. Um, but I like to see you know more people. I like to see I like to see some of you guys do some K-pop videos. Super Fini Zero Zero, see Youngster Twenty Four, uh, Two Thousand Eleven Go Knowles. Um, I like to see you guys make some K-pop videos because I'm already, I'm subscribed to most of you guys' channels anyway. So. And then your last question you have for me is, do you prefer reviews or reaction videos? Uh, personally, maybe reviews because they're a little bit shorter. Uh, reaction videos, except for my J, uh, JJ project, which didn't go too well. Um, they got a lot of likes, but yeah, still. Um, I probably prefer reviews because it's just a little bit shorter. I can just get what I want to say off, you know, point across. And a lot of people don't think I make expressions very well. That's only because when I'm looking at a video, I try to, you know, soak everything in, try to look at, you know, one, try to, try to translate the Korean language to where I can understand so I know what the song is about, looking at the special effects, the choreography, I pay attention to everything. So because of that, you know, my expressions might not be like the best on YouTube of a, you know, for a reaction video. So, uh, but I prefer reviews better. But you tell me, and what do you guys prefer better? Uh, next set of questions come from SQ1990, and you say, "Are you anticipating YG's new girl groups, new girl groups, the Super Pearls, and the other one that's currently unnamed?" Uh, yes, I am. Super Pearls, uh, YG Entertainment are trying to make them as the next Big Mama, which were they were a powerhouse uh, vocalist female group to come from that company. Um, they definitely have the potential to be the next Big Mama, uh, so definitely looking forward to them. And like I said, more artists, which I think YG needs, because you can't just keep um, riding 21 and Big Bang forever. You gotta come up with some new artists. So um, they're coming up with two new girl groups this year. I think it's awesome. Uh, what which entertainment company in your eyes has the chance of being as big as YG, SM, or GYP? Uh, two. One, I see Cube Entertainment very close. Their roster is uh, a pretty good roster. All their artists are pretty successful, um, except for Born to Beat right now, which is understandable because they're rookies. So I see Cube Entertainment being up there um, as, as being like one of the next big companies. The one after that, I could possibly see, um, say like 10 years from now, would be TF Entertainment, which is one of my favorite, um, not one of, but my number one favorite smaller record label in K-pop right now, TS Entertainment and Playtis. I can see those two um, also growing exponentially in 10 years from now. Uh, who do you think is the best rookie rookie group, boy and girl, to debut this year so far? Uh, as far as boy groups for me, it's XO and BAP. Uh, best female, not that many females have come out, but for me, it's uh, She's. Um, let's see. What group or solo singers do you think is so underrated? Well, there really aren't any solo things I can think of, but uh, as far as um, groups, U Kiss, the most underrated, uh, in black, uh, I'm starting to think uh, for a minute, I think they're starting to lose some of their momentum a little bit. I think they need a boost. Um, I think they're starting to come a little bit more. They're starting to be, as soon as they were starting to climb up, I think they're starting to slow down a little bit in attraction. So, um, for a minute, I would say. And I just had to keep in my mind, I just lost it. But yeah, those are the three that come to my mind right now. You kiss in black for a minute. And FX. Uh Whistle Nishi Day album is my favorite. G. And besides the G, I like the Genie a lot. Maybe it's because of the music video. But the songs on the on the album too were really good, but G first. I don't really want to say Janie, but uh, yeah, G is 
my number one favorite album to come from uh, So Nishi Day. So I'm going to see how much time I have here. Okay. Um, this is going to be it for part two of my K-pop Q&A. Uh, still got a lot, lot more to go. Um, yeah, so this is going to be it. This is going to be part two. Uh, once again, check the description box for your name to see. The, check, check on the description box to see your name in the description box so that you know that I've answered your questions on this video. Um, so yeah, this is part two. Uh, so stay tuned for part three of my K-pop Q&A.